MK Wizard again, and we are going to be talking about Talk Birdie with me, with Pablo Gunner and MK Wizard. And Hi, Birdies. <laughs> and we're here to talk nerdy to you about Batman the Caped Crusader. Take it away. Thank you, Pablo Gunner. Well, like uh, Mr. Gunner says, we're here to talk about Batman Cape Crusader, the highs, the lows, and what to possibly expect in season two with some fan theories we're going to throw back and forth at each other. But before we get into that, I want to talk very seriously to all of you birdies out there about, we'll call it the diversity elephant in the room and the big debate going on about Batman K Crusader doing a lot of reimaginings in terms of diversity and also it not being exactly historically and socially accurate for the 1940s. I myself am not a fan of race, gender, and et cetera bending myself. I also don't like it when the message is pushed too hard. And I really do not like the way Bruce Tim spoke recently about his opinions on Batman. But for a very long time now, since before the Batman 1989 movie by Tim Burton, it's been established in the DC universe that it's a pretty egalitarian world, except for very small pockets of it. For the most part, its diversity is dialed up to the max, as well as having the obvious forms of people being different. It has talking gorillas, Amazons, demons, demigods, aliens, fantastical races, metahumans, mutants, and so much more, as well as having more added to the list all the time. It has also been established that this world was very egalitarian and not concerned with racial profiling, gender roles, or who people loved a very, very long time ago, even a lot earlier than our world did. It's a world where people get lost in and try to imagine themselves in. It is not a timepiece, nor is it a historical documentary, so it is not obliged to be like our world. If of all the complaints you have about Batman Cape Crusader is that it doesn't have bigotry in it, even in the 1940s, that is a you problem, and I suggest looking inward as to why that is, and I do hope that you make peace with whatever demon is driving you to be that way, because I'm sorry, it is a you problem, and I'm saying this to you as a friend, not as a judge. Anyways, let's go back to the main topic. Like I said, the highs. Can we talk about how badass the animation and just the setting is in Batman Cape Crusader? For the longest time, I myself as a comic fan have, have been craving very deliciously a superhero cartoon that's aimed for my age group that is in such a way that doesn't rely on small potatoes things like fan service, gore fests, or anything like that. Yes, the show draws blood in that it has on-screen deaths, dead bodies, and even people drawing blood in the fight scenes. But it's all classy. It's in a way that really respects the maturity of the audience and makes you stop and think about deep, meaningful things. And I love it for that. I even love the smooth animation style, how it even has that edge. And that, uh, for the first time in a long time, the adults actually look like adults. <laughs> Because I find that is a bit of a problem in a lot of modern animation. The characters look too cutesified and sometimes it's hard to tell. Am I looking at an adult, a teenager, a kid? Yeah, I, I like that it brought the edge and grit back into its style. The other thing I really love are the imaginings and reimaginings and how it's also being its own story and not relying on the coattails of Batman the Animated Series from the 90s to the early 2000s. It really is a fresh new story with a fresh new version of the characters and their storylines. And I really want to draw attention to one specific reimagining that is not getting enough love, but really should be getting. It's the badass reimagining of Barbara Gordon as a lawyer. I love her. She is brave, she has a strong sense of justice, and I see a lot of parallels between the Batgirl version of herself, and one very fun detail I find is that one of her iconic suits is purple. <laughs> And also, I like it because it's nice to see ba Barbara Gordon as an adult for a change who's mature and a little more seasoned in terms of the law and also has her own opinions on the morality of good and evil. And while she does support her father, Commissioner Jim Gordon, and stands by him, she is not above getting into debates with him about the morality of good and evil as well as the law and even calling out the broken system. 
that exists within Gotham, and she's not wrong. Mind you, neither is Commissioner Gordon. I also love the fact that it was very episodic, this series. It had underlying plots like the hunt for Batman by crooked cop Harvey Bullock, that gal yeah, that me imagining, and his uh, cohort, as well as Harvey Dent's attempt at getting elected as mayor, yet descends into becoming Two-Face. I love it. I just love it. What about you, uh, Mr. Gunner? Oh my gosh, there's so much to love in this show. There really is. Yeah, the animation is phenomenal. A lot of people go like, oh, it seems like it could be a sequel or a prequel or whatever to uh, Batman in the Animated Series, but it really is its own thing and that's really great. And it is cool too to see that like you have Commissioner Gordon and he's he looks like he's up there in years. He might be like in his 50s. So obviously his daughter's going to be like in her, in her 20s or so. And then Bruce looks like he's older, like, you know, maybe 30s or what, I don't know. But yeah, so that that was really great to see. And you can see that it, they're kind of pushing her, not pushing her, but she's leaning that way towards possibly being Batgirl. So I'm like, I, we might get it. I don't know if we're going to get it next season because it's a slow progression. You can see it's a slow progression where it's it's going to, it's instead of it being quick so it doesn't make sense, It's I feel like it's going to be a slow thing if they make it happen. So that's really cool. And I just, so many of the moments too, just with Bruce being Bruce, like seeing him, like the damaged Bruce, that was so great. And then those moments too, where he talks to Harvey, because he sees that in Harvey, where Harvey is like him in a sense. In fact, there's a lot of characters, which are villains in this, where he has that relatability with them, where he go, where they say that he's alike and he's like, no, we're nothing alike. But then there's times where like he slips up, he accidentally does the Batman voice to Two-Face and then he like reels back and he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. You know, like tries to just brush it away and you go, they're more alike than you realize. And it's crazy. And that was so cool to see that because you go like, he really is at his core. He He's Batman, not Bruce, and Bruce is the facade. Like, that's so cool to be, that he really is hiding when he's Bruce, you know? Yes. It's it's crazy. And, oh, yeah. And then, yeah, just Bullock and Flash and, and everything. There's so many of the side characters were just absolutely phenomenal. I have to admit that often at times, Detective Montoya stole the show. She oh, was yes. fun to watch. And yes, it's funny that you should mention the fact that a lot of characters have parallels with him because often I found that this take of Catwoman was like a broken reflection of Bruce in a lot of ways, all the way down to having her own Alfred, so to say. Except unlike uh, Batman and Alfred Pennyworth, their relationship is not so great. And in the end, uh, her handmaiden, so to say, like uh, went and uh, betrayed her. But admittingly, Selina did not give her the appreciation and respect she deserved as a partner. She would just thrust everything on her, dump everything on her, and even blatantly ignore her at times. And Selina kind of went into this, uh, the whole mass vigilante thing for all the wrong reasons and even was very amateurish about it. She was treating it like a game, which does align with her personality because cats are playful. They do what they feel like doing and don't always think ahead of things. They are very curious and act on that curiosity. More on that later. Anyways, now it's time to talk about the woes. Because unfortunately, as much as we love this show, it does have its lows. The biggest complaint I have that's actually very significant to the show is the fact that in the beginning, it seemed like it was trying to figure out where it wanted to focus on. Did it want to focus on the GCPD? Did it want to focus on the Batman and keep him as this mysterious character or actually delve into him? Did they want to do a bit of both? In the end, it did find its footing, but it did take its time. And I would have liked it if from the get-go, this show knew what it was going to be. But I'm not going to completely fault it because this is a very common flaw a lot of great shows have in their first season. And admittingly, it still carried itself well. And we did get a chance to get to know the characters. So while it is a low and it is a bit of a serious one, it's one I'm willing to also like forgive it for. One that I also really find is a big low in, in a way that's not very good and kind of was a waste was the fact that they killed Two-Face right away. Like WTH, that's just the extent of which I'll swear on YouTube. <laughs> like Two-Face is a staple in the Batman war. And he had just started being Two-Face. There are so many more stories you could have used with Harvey Dent. Would he get a redemption arc? Would he descend even further into villainy and become a mob boss like he did in the Batman, the animated series, or the comics? Would he do both? I mean, this is Two-Face. He tends to have it 
both ways, answers the MO. It's uh, like such a waste. Like, why would you kill such a great character off, especially after developing him so beautifully? It's uh, He left a very big pair of shoes to fill. And while I do think the show is going to recover, there is going to be always that gaping hole left behind. What do you say, uh, Mr. Vetter? Well, going back to what you were talking about with Selena and, and her partner in crime, so to speak, the, the opposite side of that was seeing that relationship between Alfred Pennyworth and Bruce Wayne Blossom because he just calls him Pennyworth and he's really he's kind of mean to him and rude to him and by the end he really truly sees him as a partner and is and he says like he breaks down emotionally to him he says like hey I couldn't do this without you because he does help him in in one very important part and he calls him Alfred and you go like okay and see I love that because it's it's a simple thing hey you're just you call him Pennyworth the whole time and then you call him Alfred once and then you call him that forward and you go that's it's slow character progression and but it's it's perfect. Like it's so beautiful. And and that relationship was magnificent. But what about the, what are the lows in your opinion? Because I'm sure that uh, you have your own opinion on some of the lows. I know you share my opinion about them killing off two. Friends. Right. Yeah. I, I, that really frustrated me that they killed him off. Cause that he really is like one of my favorite characters because when you talk to him, you really don't know who you're talking to, right? Like, you don't know if you're talking to Two-Face or you're talking to Harvey Dent. Because Harvey Dent, he st- he wants justice. And he wants, he sees that too. He sees the broken system and goes like, I, he can still do justice on his own. And then there's Harvey Dent, who is the crooked. But he still kind of also has like a crooked sense of justice as well. So you're like, yeah, he could be the mob boss, but runs it right in a sense. So the, yeah, it's like you threw that all away. And I'm like, I, I thought maybe they might be like, oh, they're just going to pretend he's dead. or But it's like the dude took multiple bullets. Like he is done. And in that same breath, in that same moment, Bruce Wayne or Batman, I say Bruce Wayne, but he picks up the gun and he shoots. Now he doesn't kill anybody, but he still uses the gun. And to me, that almost ruined the show for me because me just like him, him touching a gun makes zero sense to me and always has because yeah, there's that opposite end where you go like, oh yeah, there's the evil Batman that goes, I'm going to use guns to kill the people that killed my parents, those kinds of people, right? We've seen that alternate universe and you go, okay, yeah, that's the evil side. But then the opposite end is is the good, which is I'm never going to touch a gun again. And I'm going to stop every person from having to deal with the same hurt that I dealt with. And so just him touching a gun when he has such vitriol towards the same situation and guns made zero sense to me. Even if he didn't kill the person, it just didn't make sense. And so, like I said, it almost ruined the show for me. So for me, that was like the biggest low, but because of how good the show was, it didn't ruin it, but it almost did. And and like you said, the two-faced thing, absolutely. And just for me though, I feel like, yeah, a first season always kind of struggles to find its footing. And then you have a lot of expedition exposition to do, right? Like you have to flesh out all these side characters and make, Make them feel like they're not side characters and they're just an ensemble cast. And that's essentially what they're trying to do. And yet it can be very difficult. I mean, in every show, I feel like struggles with that first season when they're fleshing out their characters. I mean, like even The Office, it's like, or, you know, all these iconic shows, a lot of them struggle in their first season. And that's why they should get a second season to to really be like, okay, now we can soar from here on out. Well, I think it's safe to say that Batman Cape Crusader not only earned its second season, but possibly even its third and fourth, which I do hope it will have. Well, I don't know fourth if it's necessary, if it's necessary, because it might tie everything neatly together in a neat little bowl we'll by season three, or maybe not, we'll see. Now the fun part, possible theories of where it's going to go in season two. My fan theory is, is the most obvious being, is that now that Harvey Dent is no longer with us, that and Barbara Gordon is still around, it is possible that she's going to run for DA. At least I think so. And I wouldn't have had it past her to launch a campaign to do that because Barbara is very hell-bent on fixing up Gotham with the right way. And she's a very honest lawyer, but in doing so, that also puts a big target on her back because she's not willing to make deals with Rupert Thorne of any kind. She's not willing to cut corners. She is not willing to look the other way at injustices. So yeah, I think that is one direction they're going to go, and that's going to make for a very good plot arc. Another plot arc that I do think is going to happen is the return of the Penguin, because as you remember, after she was jailed, that uh, gave Rupert Thorne all the power, but again, it also puts a big target on his back, 
because now all the illegal activities, all the dirty work, all of the arranged crime can be traced back to him. I would not put Penguin, I would not put a past Penguin to take up or to use this as an opportunity to uh, make a truce with him and help him and under the guise of being an ally and then backstabbing him in the end. And of course, having his own, Rupert Thorne having his own contingency plan, because as you know, there's no honor among thieves. I also predict the possible return, no, the most likely return of Catwoman, but I think she might also develop her edge and her grit of her own after spending some time in prison, because up until now, she never had to truly pay for her crimes until now. And now that she has done some time and has no money to her name, it will be more like the cat, who, the Selena Kyle we know, who's poor and struggling to get by and living in the shadows. She's uh, going to be a lot edgier. And the love-hate thing between herself and Batman Bruce Wayne is going to be dialed up a notch because on one hand, he did save her life from being shot down in cold blood. But on the other, he's the one who got her jail to begin with. The other thing that I do think is may very well happen in the second season is that Batman is going to get a sidekick. However, I don't think it's going to be one of the sidekicks or we usually see like a version of one of the Batgirls or a Robin. In fact, I think this might very well be the cartoon debut of the more recent sidekick of Batman, The Signal, aka Duke Thomas, which I do think is going to be interesting to watch because, yeah, we do want fresh new ideas from the Batman lore and the Batman cartoons. So yes, I do think it's very likely that it is going to go in that direction. What say you? What are your fan theories, Mr. Gunner? Well, they they left off with the Joker. So I think Joker's going to come in. He sounds different. I don't know if that's going to be a strength or a weakness. We'll see. I really wanted them to stay away from Joker because I feel like you just can't recreate what Mark Hamill has done, which it seems like they're not trying to, but by going the exact opposite is that it might be a mistake. And I've seen other people do that. Like they've done that. They like the Spider-Man movies have done that, right? Where they go, well, we've seen this in, in the other Spider-Man movies. We're not going to do that. He's not going to be in the city. He's going to be in the suburbs. That's not Spider-Man. You know, it doesn't make sense. So, and it doesn't work. So. No, it doesn't. And the most obvious one being, what's he going to swing on? <laughs> That was, funny. <laughs> that was admittedly funny in the movie, but at the same time, it's also silly. What did you expect? Yeah, I mean, it's a funny one-off gag, but that's about it. I, and that's not, that wouldn't work with Joker either. But so that's going to be a thing. I love the idea of Barbara Gordon being the DA, but also if that happens, I and I do completely see it happening. I think she's going to realize the the corruption and go, this system is totally corrupt and broken. Maybe the only way I can fix it is the way that Batman's doing it. And I don't know if that means she's going to do it on her own or if she's going to join up with with Batman. And that, and, and that, once again, that might be her his sidekick or she might just do her own thing and then they might link up. One of the things that I have failed to mention and I'm glad that we're doing this is the fact that they've covered the arcane in this series because I don't feel like they've covered it in most of anything very much and in this they delved into it deep and I was like yes I want more of that like let's get some gentleman ghosts like let's get some crazy and you're like how why who cares it's fun you know like the fact that Batman can't explain some things but like he can still solve it phenomenal right like it goes like yeah, he can't explain it completely, but he can still be a great detective regardless and figure it out. That's so great. So I love seeing I that. It's uh, very telling about Batman's character that he's willing to admit that there are some things he can't explain, but accept that they are what they are and work with solving them anyway. And I also have this to remind people, in the DC universe as a whole, including which Batman is part of, there always was magic. Get over it. Yeah, it's a huge part. Like, you see it more in the Justice League stuff, definitely in the Justice League stuff. So I am wrong when I say, oh, it's in nothing, but nothing like Batman-focused specifically. I mean, of course, except for, like, some of the movies, but, like, the cartoons, have, they haven't, like, the show specifically. But anyways, yeah, the other thing is, I think we're definitely going to see a fallout, a full fallout between between Bullock and Flash. I think we're going to see Bullock 
go good and support or support Gordon full full fledged and maybe even Batman. I don't know, but I they're definitely gonna have a fallout. Him and Flash are gonna have a fallout, and and we'll see how that goes. Which even in the comics, like Flash was, I mean, both of them were always dirty, but it seemed like Bullock did have like a redemption arc, you know, like, yeah, he was still kind of crappy, but he still did his best regardless at a certain point. And we saw that a little bit in the Gotham show, but I, I think we'll, I think that's what we're going to see coming next. I like that idea. Then your Penguin. Yes. Cause I was like, Penguin's only in the first episode. There's no way Penguin's not coming back in the second season. No way. So I, I can't wait for that too. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be great to see more Penguin. I definitely think she's going to make a comeback. And uh, like I said, Penguin has always been world renowned for being very opportunistic because at uh, her heart or his heart or whatever you imagine them as, Penguin is a business person. Whenever Penguin sees an opportunity, Penguin grabs it. And I think that in this situation with Cape Crusader, the fact that uh, Rupert Thorne is at the top, it, while it does make him very powerful, it also makes him very vulnerable. She's going to take full advantage of that and reclaim her empire. Absolutely, yeah, because he's going to be getting attacked probably from Barbara, from Gordon, from Batman, like from every end. So th he's going to need an ally. And then that's, you know, like they say, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. So, you know, we'll see how that goes for sure. That'll be cool. That would be cool. And it would be fun to watch how each of them betray each other in the mm -hmm. end. That they each had their own contingency plan. But as always, none of them can compare to Batman's contingency plan. Yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. So, yeah, make sure you check out MK Wizard on all of her stuff. The comics are great. They're cute, adorable. All your posts are so phenomenal. I love them. Heart them all. Share them. Repost them, whatever, because they're so great. So check them all out on all the social medias, you know, Instagram, threads, Twitter, X, whatever, all on everything. Talk nerdy to me. And talk birdie to me. Bye-bye for now. Hope all you birdies stay safe and stay well.